Hi, I'm Dan Road, IT Security Guru. Today with Robert Hansen from White Hat Security. Robert, good to see you. Whereabouts are you, Robert? I'm in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. <laughs> I'm in London. It's a lot colder here than where you are. <laughs> so um, we're going to talk about the Aviator browser, which White Hat launched uh, last year. So the first question, uh, why did a security company launch a web browser? Well, if you look at the, the web application space, there's really two components. There's the web application, and then there's the browser that consumes it. So White Hat has been focused entirely up to now um, on protecting web applications, identifying flaws, and, and helping companies uh, fix those flaws. But the other half of that, the other you know 50% of the web is the consumer, you know, the, the people who actually have to take that data and process it in a sandbox and run it and look at it and hopefully be safe when they do so. So for us, it was sort of a natural progression. Um, we have to look at a lot of websites, and you know, we work at, with thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, websites. We need to be able to uh, look at those websites in a safe way ourselves. So it's very easy to attack you know, somebody who maybe isn't as technical as our core research team, uh, the people who actually find the loans. Uh, you know, we have just people like everybody else, you know, administrators and, you know, marketing people, you know, people who are not necessarily, you know, tech savvy as, as you know, you or I or, you know, anyone listening to this. Uh, so we needed a way to uh, not only protect our, our, you know, threat research people, but also to protect the sort of the low hanging fruit within our company, you know, the, you know, the payroll people and so on. Mm -hmm. So we developed uh, Aviator internally as just sort of a project just to uh, do what we saw as a major hole in the security industry um, around browsers uh, to identify and fix all of the vulnerabilities that we think are the, the most easy common attack vectors to uh, take people out. So that's how it started. Excellent. So, I mean, how many downloads have you had so far of Aviator? Can you reveal that? Um, I don't actually have the raw numbers off the top of my head, but it's many tens of thousands now. Yeah. And right now we're still in beta. In fact, we haven't even marketed it yet. Mm. Um, in fact, I think this might be like the second interview I've ever done about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, no, we, we really, we just decided this was just going to be friends and family of the security industry. Um, you know, we did a couple blog posts about a couple tweets, but you know, no big marketing blasts. We certainly are not putting advertisements on television or anything like that. Mm. Uh, I don't think that that really makes sense, at least until we have a Windows version. Um, so until we sort of, you know, get a lot of the bugs sort of worked out, get our update mechanism working the way I feel uh, it should be working, and so on, then it really wouldn't make sense to do that. Uh, so right now, the, the number is low, but it's intentionally low because we just want to work through all of those bugs. You mentioned there about not a Windows version. Is it just available for what, uh, Linux or Mac or something? Uh, just Mac today because that's what our office uses. Mm -hmm. um, but down the road, uh, probably next couple months, I guess, uh, we'll, we'll start uh, playing with a, a Windows version. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to do some other things in the short term just to kind of get over uh, some of the, the initial bugs that we found because there are some usability issues just with every new browser, um, and also um, make sure that we're using the most common version, uh, updated version of the rendering engine. Great stuff. And also, you know, was this a deliberate move uh, to launch AVA to, to address where the security issues that other, um, other browsers have maybe missed out, do you think? That's exactly right. Um, we have been, you know, Jeremiah Grossman and I and a couple other, you know, high-end security people in our company have been banging on the, the browser companies basically since they have been browser companies at least the last decade. Um, you know, basically, we've, and, you know, the funny part is they'll agree with you. You know, you tell them, like, this is a problem, and they'll nod their head, and they'll agree, and there's really no debate there. Uh, the problem is, what do you do about it? Um, and the biggest problem that we found with the browser companies was not their knowledge or expertise or talent or anything like that. It was their business model. Um, they're basically incented to make it hard for people to protect their privacy because they're effectively paid when that privacy is given to advertisers um, through, you know, basically advertising systems. Um, and that simple fact, that one thing, I mean, it sounds kind of minor, but that one thing leads to all kinds of downstream security problems. Um, the fact that Flash and Java are enabled by default, the fact that cross-domain iframes to God knows what rendering JavaScript and all kinds of other active control or whatever is enabled by default in all browsers. That's the kind of thing that makes it very difficult for you to protect yourself um, unless you do something, unless you actively do something. And as we know, consumers don't actively do anything. <laughs> if they're given their own computer with their own stuff on it, they're probably not going to make any modifications to it. Uh, so, you know, for you and me and people reading, you know, listening to this or whatever, uh, maybe it's not a big deal. You know, we can go download uh, ad blocking software. We can, you know, protect ourselves with sandboxes and whatever. But uh, for the average user, that's just a non-starter. So. 
Um, you know, it's a bit of a stretch to say that they'll download another browser since they don't make many uh, changes to their system, but we have a bunch of ideas on how we can make that much more compelling for people. Um, because I think in this day and age of Snowden and the NSA leaks and whatever, people actually care about their privacy a mm-hmm. little bit more than they used to. So it's a bit of an easier thing to, to talk about. Absolutely. And just one more question. You know, is, is there room in this, you know, in, in the world, in, in planet Earth, for another browser? There's probably maybe four or five out there that are available for people to use. Uh, you know, can people you know, justify actually you know, using, downloading Aviator and using it over something that's slightly more well-known? Um, it, it truly depends. Um, and I, I actually believe that there's a lot of room for new browsers. Um, I think Chrome had a really interesting business model early on, uh, or stated business models, despite what they're actually trying to do. Uh, but really, their whole goal was to speed up the internet. They wanted to make everything faster. Um, and that was a great goal, I think, that, that made uh, a lot of rich technologies available to the browser that wouldn't normally be able to, uh, because they sort of reignited that browser war. Um, uh, I think Firefox did a great job of saying, you know, people want customization in the browser, again, reigniting the browser war if you go retroactively backwards in time. I think, like those browsers, you know, started a new um, started a new cause online for people to say, this is something that we want, and other browsers are going to have to do it, otherwise we're going to switch from them. Um, you know, not wholesale, not every person switched from Internet Explorer to Firefox or Chrome, um, mm-hmm. but enough did that it made uh, everyone start uh, mm-hmm. up-leveling their game. Um, I think Aviator is trying to do something around privacy and security that the other browsers haven't. Um, and just like they did something to try to um, make user customization important, just like they try to do something to make speed and performance, we're trying to make stuff that's um, you know more private, more secure, that people can actually leverage to do all the stuff they'd normally be able to do just in a way that doesn't necessarily give up everything that they own to do it. So privacy and security is your uh, kind of USP, really? Well, for now, um, I think down the road we have a lot of really great ideas. I mean, we clearly know our way around browsers. Uh, but for this moment, I think the thing that we're focused on most is making sure that people have a browsing experience that, you know, we, we're not incented to steal their, their privacy. We're, we're a company that already makes money in a completely different way. We have no, we're, we don't have banner ads. We're not, <laughs> we're not that kind of company. Uh, so it's much easier for us to say that we're not interested in taking your stuff from you. Maybe down the road we, we have a paid model. We actually say, hey, if, if you want to pay us to, to continue developing this, great. Uh, that way there's no misincentives. You know, we, we'll actually give you customer support for your own browser. That's the first time, I think, in history there's ever been customer support for a browser. So <laughs> we'll see. Good point, we'll yeah. Great stuff. <laughs> Robert, we look forward to hearing all the rest of the news on this. So thanks very much for your time. All right. Thank you. Thank you.